So my talk at the conference was first of all about the field or discipline, however you want to call it, of Buddhist studies in Europe. This is quite different from the field of Buddhist studies in the US where most of the uh, participants came from. So I started with uh, speaking about the situation of Buddhist studies, especially in the German world, but also in the wider context of Europe, and pointed out that uh, in comparison, for instance, to other Buddhist countries like Japan or Korea, uh, it's not so easy to get uh, finances here for doing Buddhist studies. Like in Japan, there are many private schools of Buddhist studies sponsored by believers, sponsored by sectarian organizations. This, of course, is not the case in Germany, in Europe, because Buddhism is just too small in the Euro European world. Whatever we can get here, and that's not very much, is uh, financial contributions to our activities at our institutes, or if it goes very far, it is already a chair which we can get financed. In our case here at the University of Hamburg, at the Numata Center of Buddhist Studies, we were lucky to, three years ago, get money from a Japanese Buddhist organization, the so-called Bukkyo Dendu Kyokai, the Society for the Promotion of Buddhism, who decided to sponsor a chair in Japanese Buddhism for the coming 30 years. This is something quite exceptional. We're very happy to get that. Also, our institute is supported in terms of uh, Buddhist activities by the Bukyo Dendo Kyokai again, which uh, grants us some money for doing activities related to Buddhist studies. And we also get some money from the so-called Kienze Foundation, which is in particular dedicated to the spread of Tibetan Buddhist studies here in Germany. I also mentioned during my talk that there is one big college in Europe. It's placed in Budapest in Hungary. It's called the Dharma Gate Buddhist College. And this is, as far as I know, the only real Buddhist university which is dedicated to Buddhist studies. This is a university quite interestingly uh, established in the 1980s, beginning of the 1990s, and it's sponsored by government, which I guess was quite a surprise for our many participants from the US. It's sponsored by government. It has a curriculum specialized on Buddhist studies, but also in the theological field, if you want to mention something like uh, Buddhist theology. So this is quite exceptional, and it has a number of students in which they try to prepare them in, for instance, Buddhist history, studying Buddhist languages, but also what we would call more theological fields in terms of how to give a, doc, a good talk on Buddhism, how to give a good Dhamma talk. Referring to Germany, the situation is very different. As far as I know, we have no Buddhist university institution in Germany, and I contrasted that during my talk with a situation regarding Christian theological chairs. Uh, if you check the number of chairs sponsored um, in, the terms, in terms of Christian theology, on the one hand Protestant theology, on the other hand Roman Catholic uh, theology, you will find out that currently and that's, these are numbers for the years uh, 2013 and 14. we had 744 chairs for Christian theology. So this is a quite surprisingly high number and it's even more surprising if you contrast that with the number of Buddhist chairs we have in Germany, which is something like four, maybe five. So there is a big discrepancy. For all of our participants from the Anglo-Saxon countries, this might be quite surprising because in none of these countries are chairs in theological studies like Christian theology sponsored by the government, which, uh, of course, as we know here in Germany, is quite normal in the German context. Then I contrasted also the fact that Buddhist studies in Germany is still embedded in the so-called regional disciplines. Whereas in the Anglo-Saxon world, they are embedded in so-called religious studies departments. That's a difference because if you place Buddhist studies in um, a regional uh, defined discipline, then primarily you will deal with the culture and the languages of that region. Whereas if you have Buddhist studies in the field of religious studies, you will immediately understand the core of Buddhist studies as the religious background. Both placements have plus and negative. The plus, if you embed Buddhist studies, as it has been here in Germany for the last hundred years, 
if you have it embedded in the regional studies, that means that, uh, of course, it becomes easier to analyze the Buddhist tradition in terms of its Indianness, because Buddhism has been a product of Indian culture. So if you are surrounded by specialists in Indian culture, it will be much easier to understand what are the particularly Indian features of this tradition. Whereas if you place Buddhist studies in the religious studies context, which is the majority of cases in England and the USA, then it becomes much better to see Buddhism in contrast to other religions like Christianity, Judaism, or uh, Islam uh, studies. That's the advantage if you have it in a religious studies department. And even better is if you had Buddhist studies embedded in a wider unit of fields where you would, let's say, um, approach Buddhism from a philological point of view, studying the languages and manuscripts of this region, but also throwing light on Buddhism in terms of its sociological structures, in terms of its art history, in terms of its history, in terms of its philosophy, in terms of its ethical system. So this would, what I think, be the best system, that you have a core Buddhist discipline which draws particular scholars from all different kinds of specializations. This is, of course, not existent in Germany, and there are only a few of such universities where you have a Buddhist discipline in that broad scope in the United States of America. In the second part of my um, lecture, I dealt with the question whether Buddhist theology of that, what you would call Buddhist theology, of course there is no God in Buddhism, but still we talk of something like Buddhist theology uh, in terms of comparing it to what we have in the Christian field in terms of Christian theology. And the question which comes up is whether it's uh, a good idea to embed Buddhist theology at universities such as ours here. And there are arguments for it and arguments against it. The arguments against is that theologists somehow have a different scope, have a different mode of inquiry, and they have a different aim than they deal with Buddhism. Namely, they want to make Buddhism somehow usable, sometimes positive to being used for the contemporary world. Whereas as a Buddhist study scholar without theological interest, your main interest was probably be to come up with historical facts, with understanding the philosophy, but not necessarily constructively uh, making this usable for contemporary uh, believers or followers of Buddhism. So that would be an argument against it to say Buddhist theology has nothing lost at universities. If you want to see it from a positive side, you could argue that as long as in Germany we have Christian theology, Christian theological professors at our universities, then in the same way also other religions like Buddhism should have the right to have uh, Buddhist theological studies at universities and sponsored by governments. In our city, in Hamburg, where we are based, uh, the question is particularly interesting because uh, the city of Hamburg is planning to introduce or has already introduced some uh, new styles of teaching religion at schools uh, in which, of course, um, students should have access to all kinds of different religious scholars and priests, not only Christian priests, but they should also have the right to listen to representatives from the Buddhist faith, what they themselves have to say about their own religions. And this would be an argument to say, yes, we also need a kind of Buddhist theology at universities because it's the um, aim and it's the duty of the universities to train these religious scholars in terms of Buddhism in order to teach at schools, but also maybe in a further step to train Buddhist chaplains and similar things in the future. But that is a particular German um, Hamburg question here at Hamburg. The last point of my talk was dealing with the role Buddhist studies at universities can fulfill. Of course, first of all, we do research because we try to understand Buddhism in all its different aspects. We are interested in the history of Buddhism. We are interested in the philosophy of Buddhism. We want our students to learn critical thinking. We want our students to become specialists and train them in intercultural communication. This is also the reason why we send our students abroad for one semester. Sometimes they even go voluntarily for two semesters and they have to live abroad in one of the countries where Buddhism is at home. But we are not only restricted to our students. And in my lecture, I also pointed out that I think that one of our duties here at the University in Buddhist Studies is to encourage more intercultural sensibility 
for the general public. You know, Europe is still deeply embedded in a very Eurocentric view. And I think it is absolutely necessary, not only for our students, not only for, let's say, teachers who are trained at the university, but also for the general public, to come to see that now one of the major centers of developments in the world is Asia, which is of course mostly Buddhist, and to show how Buddhism can play a role in enhancing this kind of intercultural awareness. I uh, finished my talk with stating that uh, we are also prepared here at the university to play this role more active in terms of coming up with models, models which can be taken by students at our university to get a particular plus in knowledge on uh, Asian cultures and in that sense uh, we would be willing to contribute the intercultural awareness for all our students and in a further sense also for the wider public.